Impact Wrestling fans, what is going on? This is the Impact Lounge. This is BQ. Please hit the subscribe button if it's your first time here. We're trying to get up to that 2,500 subscriber mark. So would really appreciate it and I would love you a long time. So here's the discussion question for you guys. I've been wanting to talk about this for a little bit. And I want to know you guys' thoughts. Would you like to see Jack Swagger in Impact Wrestling? I don't know what he goes by right now. All the... Uh, all the artwork I see for independent shows, it's, it's always says Jack Swagger. So, curious what you guys think. Many of you, I already know this, don't want to see former E-guys in the company. And I get that. I'm one of the people, I don't want to see it go overboard. I don't want to see washed up wrestlers. But I have no problem with, you know, guys from the mid-card um, feeding their families and coming over to a new company and doing something different. I have no problem with, with WWE guys coming over. Again, my problem is washed up people. Jack Swagger, believe this or not, when I was watching the company on a regular basis, was my number one favorite wrestler, and he has been for a long time. Now, I don't know if any other person in the United States can say that about him, but he has always been my favorite. And right now, I think they are lacking a lot of star power in the main event scene. And if it means implanting some talent or importing, I should say, from, from elsewhere to make that happen, I think that's a good idea. You know, um, we talk a lot about building their own stars up, but it's, it's really impossible right now because they don't have a good mid-card title or mid-card title scene. And you can build up through the X Division to a certain extent. You know, make, can you get that next AJ Styles starting in the X Division? They've built a lot of stars in TNA's past from the X Division. But right now, to elevate someone to the main event scene is very difficult to do. So, that, so I can understand you probably got to bring in some names from elsewhere. But with Swagger, when he debuted on the whole ECW thing a long time ago, I already liked them right away. And... I enjoyed his run as like the ECW champion and he did the um, the program with Christian after Christian left TNA. And he eventually got a world title run. And he did this, uh, you know, for those of you who watched, he, he used to do these, uh, you know, long talking segments in the ring. But what they would do is that they would cut to a commercial in the middle of it and then come back and he's still talking, make it, making it sound like he's just been talking for 15, 20 straight minutes. Something that just kind of added a little bit of humor. But he did um, this one segment where he was like celebrating his accomplishments and he had trophies and all, all these things. Dude, to me, that's still one of the funniest segments in wrestling. And I really thought they had something there with him at the time. I thought he was a main event dude. Um, they always, you know, they've given him a hard time because of his accent. But I mean, you see, you see people in main event scenes in any wrestling company who can't talk all the time. So, to me, it's kind of a ridiculous excuse. Uh, but I always thought he had something. And then he he got regulated to like the lower mid card scene for a really long time. Kind of repackaged him with Zeb Coulter, and he came back. He could have won the world title. And then they, uh, he was he was against um, Del Rio, you know, Alberto El Patron, doing a program with him. He was a super stale champion, and instead of you know putting the title on the Red Hot Swagger, they um, they kept it on Alberto. And I think there's been you know some some issues where he was unsafe in the ring, caused some concussions and everything, and they held that against him. But this was a guy who I really thought could um, compete in the ring. And there was a, uh, I know we're talking a lot of WWE here, but we're talking about a WWE guy. Um, he did a program with Rusev where Rusev was really hot as a, um, over as a heel. And, you know, it was like, who's going to get over? Who's going to beat him? And Swagger was the one who, when they put him in the program, he again got a lot of momentum again. He can't, got a lot of underdog momentum this time. But people were really pushing for him and then derailed the whole thing again and he turned to crap again so this is someone i really think 
has the potential to be in that main event scene. I've seen three times now that he got that push and then they pulled the plug on it. But I think that I think that it's there. I know he um, has his wife at his side and Impact has proven to be very uh, accommodating to couples, you know, to married couples or, or boyfriend girlfriends. So I think he's someone who could uh, could help the company a lot. I think he could transition in there really well. He had the match with Eli Drake at WrestleCade, and then he had a match with uh, EC3 somewhere else too. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but you know there was, it was, they were taping for Impact. And I was looking on Facebook today, and there was uh, some photos of Swagger and his wife, and they looked like, you know, they had the same gray background. Now, obviously, a lot of photographers use this. But the gray background behind them looked like the exact same one that the Impact Stars have behind them um, for their photo shoots. It, it, it's they, they just have a certain they have a certain like gray color, and it looked just like it. It looked like the kind of photo they were taking for Impact Wrestling. So I really think we are going to see him on Impact programming here soon. When they, you know, whatever it is they're filming with WrestleCade and these other companies for the one night onlys, I think they are going to feature him on here. But I have to wonder too, because they've talked about his relationship with Dutch Mantel. We don't really know what that relationship is with Dutch Mantel and Impact going forward. Now, this could just be something that the dirt sheets blew up a little bit because he didn't go to Canada. And every time someone didn't go to Canada or something, it's like, oh, he's, he's, he's on the outs with the company. You know, they're going to be returning here to Orlando. There's no Jim Cornette, so they're going to need some kind of authority figure. They can't just have nobody with the way that the uh, they've been booking the shows lately. You, you can't just take it away all of a sudden. And maybe maybe Bruce Pritchard will be back. We don't know. I, I happen to think um, Dutch fits that role very well. And I think he's a good wrestling mind and someone that should should be around going forward. Now, if it is true and he's not around anymore, then what does that mean for trying to bring Jack in? We don't know. That's To me, that sounds like the connection needed to make it happen. Some of you guys might not want to see him anywhere near the company. And I can understand that. Again, like a, a lot of you that I talk to don't want former E-people. But we need something to add some juice to this main event scene. I think this is the type of guy to do it because I think he can also work very well in the ring. And I'm a big fan of guys with valets, even though it doesn't really exist a whole lot anymore. And that's kind of his gimmick right now because he's got his wife with him acting as a valet. And that's something I feel like is missing from Eli Drake. I would put a female with him instead of Chris Adonis. Just my thing. So... I know I've been talking here for a little while, so let me know in the comments if uh, Swagger is someone you would like to hear or like to see in the company. Perhaps he's not. I 100% want to see him in the company. He was my favorite, like I said, and um, I would love to cheer for him in Impact Wrestling as well. Thanks for swinging by. Peace.